thrilled now to go and visit with Raptors forward Danny Green, hosting the Battle in the Apple High School Basketball Showcase this weekend. Danny, thanks for making time for us, man. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate you guys. So you guys have been one of the, the best teams in the NBA this year, one of the one of the most fun teams to watch play. How's the adjustment been going from a long time with the Spurs to now a Raptor? Actually, it's been great. Um, it's been amazing. The team has made it easy. Uh, the organization has made it easy. The players, coaches. So um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I mean, it's still very early. And people are you know, excited and saying that we're going to do this, do that. And we're obviously, you said we're one of the best teams. We just have the best, better record right now. It doesn't mean we're the best team yet. We still know we have a long ways to go. And, uh, you know, we have a, a lot of potential, a lot of talent, but we have to keep working and try to get better. You guys beat Philly last night at home. It's a good win against a good basketball team. I know it's only December. Can a win like that in December tell you something about yourself as a team, help you measure what you're good at, what you need to work on? Um, a little bit, not really though. I said it's so, still so early. Um, their team, they just found you know a new rhythm, a new chemistry because they have uh, new players. They had a, a big trade where they're still trying to you know adjust and gel together. So it looks like they're they're looking really good. They're playing pretty well. Um, they're going to be a, a a very tough team to beat further in the future in the East. So um, I said right now it doesn't say much, but you know it, it's good to win right now and continue to learn at the same time. All right, speaking of last night's game, we, we need some help with you here. You, you retweeted this video. We love it. We'll show it to you. Kyle Lowry's introduction uh, before the game. Can you just take us through what's going on here? Uh, you know, Kyle has this. Kyle's great with his introductions, man. You know, he uh, has a lot of fun with it. Uh, guys are out there um, just doing some exercises on the floor and on the outside. And, you know, just giving a lot of love and just having fun. You know, he, he's, he's a guy that said he, he likes to come in and, get guys going and the energy right. So it's a, it's a great way to get loose and start the game or get your mental you know, ready for the game. We like it. We're going to try it on writer's block next week and you know, maybe see if we can pull it off to, to get a, a show going. I, I want to, uh, I want to ask you about San Antonio, obviously a ton of success in that culture, that organization, the really the last 20 years and certainly your time there. Toronto's had a lot of success over the last five, six, seven years. What's the biggest change or difference been in being a Raptor versus being a Spur? Um, I think obviously the weather, uh, <laughs> um, but you know, just uh, adjusting <laughs> and adapting to a different city, uh, you know, a different coach. Um, you know, style of play is very similar to how we played in San Antonio. You know, my first couple of years for sure, uh, with the pace and the ball movement. We're still trying to get back to that. I think every team is trying to get to that. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I said just taking in a, a new city and, you know, different, you know, atmosphere in that sense. Um, so obviously, you know, San Antonio is hard to compare to anything else uh, in terms of organization-wise, how they run things. Uh, it was very disciplined. Um, you know, uh, so every, most organizations aren't that far behind. So the rest, Toronto is, is a great place right now. They're very good. They're just, you know, a little more laid back. And, and But they're still there. You know, these, these Organizations are top quality organizations and running and doing things the right way. So um, I think, you know, obviously San Antonio has been the staple and, and other teams, other organizations have gotten in. I think Toronto is very close. You went to Toronto, obviously, when, when Kawhi Leonard went to Toronto. You've actually mm -hmm. been Kawhi's teammate for every year of his career in the NBA. And it's not a secret there was some drama in Kawhi's last year in San Antonio. And part of the reason he's a he's a Raptor now. And you're in a unique position to have been there in San Antonio. You're with him now in Toronto. How do you think Kawhi has changed or, or maybe remained the same in Toronto versus his time in San Antonio? I think he's still the same guy, the same player. Um, he's great, obviously. He's doing amazing things for us this year, leading our team, damn near in every category, and, and you know, helping us win games. But uh, in the sense that he's you know, become more mature and become more of a leader vocally, which is, you know, new to me to see. You know, most people know he's not hes not a very vocal guy. He's a little more quiet. But here he's, he's talking a lot more. He's, he's telling guys where to go, where to be, what he wants, what he's looking for, and done a great job of leading our team, you know, not just by actions but vocally. And said he's a more mature, you know, great player in, in doing that and learning. Obviously, to learn how to win, we both learned how to win being in San Antonio. And we're both trying to help bring that over to, to where we are now. And, and I think he's doing a good job of leading those younger guys and helping also – the other guys that are veterans, you know, to where he likes people to be and, and you know, play with them. 
really interesting to hear you use that word leadership recently, Pop, Greg Popovich, question Kawhi's leadership. But in the, in the fair context, it was Kawhi's an amazing player, but he was never a, a leader. Did you find Pop's comments to be accurate? Do you think his description of Kawhi fits the, the player Kawhi is today? I, I don't think he was questioning his leadership. I just think that he's saying at the time that he was there in San Antonio, he wasn't one of the main leaders vocally. Um, that's because we had Timmy, Tony, Manu as well. You know, th those guys were our vets. They were older, uh, and they had been there for so long. Um, but um, I, I wouldn't say they're accurate or say they're inaccurate. I just think that maybe his statement got taken out of context, and you know, sometimes that happens. But um, all in all, leader or not, you know, Kawhi is a great player. He was, you know, leading differently when he was in San Antonio, and now he's, I would say, leading more vocally now. But he, he's been a great leader. As he's coming to his own and become, you know, the star player that he is, um, he's really done a great job of learning how to lead it and doing it better each year and each game. And obviously, said he missed a lot of time last year, so it's hard for him to lead, you know, not playing as much. But you know, this past year, he said he's he's done a ton of growing in that aspect of being more vocal. You're a Raptor now. Nick Nurse is the head coach. Kawhi's a Raptor now, and that's helped add up to the fact that you guys have the best record in the NBA, has there been a point yet, or is it too early, that you personally have realized that this can be a very special basketball team if things go well? Uh, it's too early, I think, for everybody. Um, so many teams could turn around. So many teams could tank. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, I don't think purposely tank when I say that. I mean, you know, things could go wrong. There could be a trade that happens, somebody get hurt, be out for a season, or, you know, just some chemistry happen in the middle of the season. I think we won't know of where teams are really at until you get to end of January, February. And then after All-Star break, uh, those are the times where you can kind of measure where teams are going to be at and, you know, their roster spots and who's going to be locked in and set in and, you know, who's probably at the top and, you know, what's the cream of the crop and see what, you know, matchups are going to happen and, you know, who's going to face who and who might come out. So right now it's still very early. We still have, you know, at least a month or two before we even see where, you know, teams find themselves and actually get, you know, some good meaningful, uh, you know, I guess, reps in to, to know where they stand in, in the league. Danny, we ask this of every NBA player that's, like yourself, kind enough to make some time for us. Curious for you, maybe with fans in the media who aren't paying attention as much, who maybe the most underrated player in the league is, just in terms of fans or media who aren't as focused as, as the guys that do it every single day for a living? Um, I think a lot of these I think every player is. It's not an all-star. Um. Obviously, a lot of the fans, they look at these All-Stars and they obviously root for them. They're, they're fun and exciting players to watch for a reason. They're very good at what they do. But every single guy on that court is underrated. Every single guy on that bench is underrated. A lot of those guys come in, they do their job. They're very good at what they do. Um, all the way down the line from our you know, our bench as well. It's Philly's bench. You know, I can go down the line and tell you every guy on their team that was underrated. From the TJ McConnells to the Fred Van Fleets, you know, the OGs, and you know everybody, the Jonas Valanciunas. And all the guys they have on their bench, too, that, that are underrated. Um, those guys are very good at what they do. And the reason why they're on an NBA roster and, and you know, are successful at making it to that level and also playing on the court, whether it's starting or not. Um, these guys, are, people un, you know, take them for granted. They think that they're just regular. No, these guys are very good. They go to anywhere and they can you know, really show out in any other team or in any other type of league. Danny, you're with Puma. What is it about Puma that's allowed them to make really a, a pretty big splash recently in the NBA? They've done a great job, man, of recruiting certain guys, uh, good character guys first. But, you know, obviously getting some of the young guys in, the new rookies uh, in the draft. But they've done a great job of marketing, advertising, and, and putting the new stuff out there the right way. Um, you obviously have new color waves coming out, new sneakers, and have everybody wear them. And, and they, obviously, they were one of the first to do it back when you know the league started and a lot of sports started, they were one of the first companies to be on. They're making a comeback now, but uh, I think they're doing a really great job of so getting the right guys and advertising the right way with certain sneakers and certain colorways and when new things are coming up. Um, they've always been a great lifestyle shoe, but um, now they're you know, becoming more of a, a better basketball shoe and getting back into the game. But I, I think most people love the movement that they have. They're kind of supporting a lot of different movements, events, uh, you know, Certain people, Ka Kaepernick, Meek, the, whatever things that are going on culturally, um, they've done a great job of be being involved in those things. Danny, this show is based in, in New York City. You're from the area. What can you tell us about the Battle in the Apple High School Basketball Showcase? 
Oh, I think it's going to be fun, man. Uh, it's going to be a great time. It's at the Barclays Center. We have some of the top high school prospects coming out that are, you know, supposed to be pros coming up soon. And they're head-to-head -head matching up. They're showing what they can do. They're so showcasing their, their teams, their city, where they're from. And we're trying to bring basketball back to New York. We have a couple guys coming in to uh, do some dunk contests. We have some people judging. It'll be great. We have a banquet, an annual banquet. We have some guys on a panel that can talk, myself included. Um, so it's going to be a, a really nice, fun event where, you know, we're giving back to inner city kids. We have a lot of them coming to give away tickets. We have suites for certain sponsors and sponsorships. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a lot of fun and some good, you know, basketball, high school basketball in, in New York where people can watch, you know, a, a good showcase. So I, I'm looking forward to it, and I think I hope everyone else is too. Really cool. I, I live really close to Barclays. I might take my kids. They've been wanting to go over there and watch some hoops, and why not out? Why not Thank the you. Battle in the Apple High School Showcase? Well, As I'll, you should. I'll As be there. Should. Danny It'll Green, thanks fun. for uh, I will be. Thank, Thank you so much for, for making time for us. We really appreciate you. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you.